is Brendan. And I'm David. And welcome to the LAN party. We're here talking with you guys about the latest video game news that has happened that we're going to react to. There might have been a little bit. We don't make news. We don't find news. We just read it and then we talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much how it works. And there was a lot of news because a thing happened. A very big thing happened. The Electronics Expo, I believe, happened. The E3. E3 2015. Mm-hmm. Mm. And oh, what an E3 it is. So, there's about 2 billion videos right now on YouTube with people reacting to things about E3. And if you're coming here, it's probably because, for whatever reason, you're listening to our opinions about them. So, to simplify things, David and I are going to break down sections of E3 in the coming days for us to sort of talk yeah. about it all. There is a lot to talk about. Yeah, because this was a pretty big E3, and it was full of a lot of kind of earth-shatteringly big reveals. I would say, outside of a new console generation, this is probably about as much... As you could get out of a uh, an E3. Yeah, there have been some big reveals. Um, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> the way we're going to start talking about this is David and I were each going to talk about a few of the games that we're feeling the strongest about. The ones we immediately wanted to react to. And then we're going to make a couple more videos going along while we break down a few more. Of yeah, and games. it is hard to choose between the two. But we've kind of narrowed down three of the ones that we're both really, really excited to play. Yeah. Um, I, we should just start with the one that I really I can't wait for. Horizon. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Zero Dawn looks amazing. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> All right, so Gorilla was one of those studios on Sony's side, first party that's been in the dark, right? Yeah. They made Shadowfall was the... And the... Killzone. Yeah, they made Killzone yeah. all along. Shadowfall was the subtitle for the PS4 one, right? I, I think so, yeah. Shadow something? Something. It was the launch title, uh, <laughs> Killzone, that was good. It was good. It wasn't, I liked it. It wasn't amazing, but it was good. Um, and they have always made Killzone. And one of the things about their series is the visual fidelity. Like, they've always been... Gorgeous really, games. Yeah, really gorgeous games. The most recent one actually finally had color. They figured out that they could, that was allowed. So when they did that, <laughs> that was really good. Well, I remember uh, booting up the PS4 and that was a release title. Just looking at it. Yeah, just wow. That was just, the game where you invite your friends over and you're like, look, it really is a graphics upgrade. <laughs> like, this is crazy. <laughs> it's the first game that's like, all right, we used a fraction of the PS4. Here's what we did. And then they were either let off the chain or Sony really wanted them to run free and they started making their own game, which is apparently about... Cave people hunting robot dinosaurs. Pretty much. How has this yeah. not happened before? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The way they combine it, too, is really cool. I mean, you get the start where you're, uh, uh, I think it's Alloy. That's the main girl character's name. I don't know any of the characters' names. I'm pretty sure it's Alloy. Okay. But she's, like, walking through the cave with all the cave drawings. And you know something bad, like, this is set, what? Think Planet Earth way, way, way in the future. Yeah, it's like a Planet of the Apes style deal. Yeah. Like, they don't even remember the first people now. So they don't know what technology is, but they know, like, uh, I mean, the trailer was just was just phenomenal. And the thing, like, that really keyed it for me is the, uh, when she kills that first watcher, mm. she's like, I'm sorry, little one. I didn't want you warning yeah, the yeah, others. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she treats it like an animal. Like, oh, it's just, shh, 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 ugh. I can't even talk, it's so exciting. The thing that grabbed me the most about it was the art direction in it. I loved it stylistically because it was obviously a guerrilla game. Like, the yeah. robots look a little bit like Hellgast mecha animals. They kind of about. remind me of the Geth from Mass Effect. Yeah, yeah, because they, they had the like, single <laughs> yeah. eye on a lot of them and things. But I loved the way it looked, and then the adaptative gear that she was wearing that's like built out of it. Like, she has like a recurve bow, but if you look at it, it's made out of like... Yeah. Like Kevlar armor and shit. Like and bits and pieces of those dinosaur creatures or yeah. whatever. And like the arrowheads either have little grenades on them or yeah. they're like bullets that have been like repurposed. Well, it looked like there were uh, three arrows. Uh, the explosive, electric, and the armor piercing one. And then that cool harpoon gun. And the way they were <laughs> applied in the combat made the game look tight. Like yeah. it looks like it plays well. There's like a purpose behind each of those weapons she was using. She had to use them all to take down the boss. Which is making me hope that the game has the like technical yeah. complexity that it has to go along with the art. But as far as a new IP goes, that is everything I want. That had engaging looking gameplay that I immediately wanted to do. Like yeah. as soon as I saw it, I'm like, I want to play that game. I want to sneak through those fields. That way I want to play stock a little those bit of things. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And then it had the story I wanted to know more about. Yep. And I got just enough to be interested in it. Yeah. And what happened to the humans? Yeah. <laughs> Why did they create machines? How are they dinosaurs now? And it had the art to sell it. Like, down to the music, the visuals, and everything like that. I was just blown away. Yeah. And uh, the, something about that, uh, that we'll call him the Robo T-Rex. Yeah. That's pretty much what it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, shooting parts of it off to, uh, like, expose the weak points. Like, it, mechanically, that fighting looked awesome. Yeah. There was, like, the part, it has, like, some improvised elements, because she hit it with one of the bow pieces, and that, like, 
rocket launcher falls off its back, yeah. and then she picks it up and starts like shooting at it with it. I was like, oh, that is so rad. It's just, it's it's amazing. Also, it's worth mentioning uh, the protagonist is a woman, which, yeah, hey, for once, that's good. <laughs> well, I mean, what what else do you have? You have. Laura Croft. Yeah, we have Laura Croft. Actually, well, I guess I should preface that with saying the C three is actually better better than most. It looks like Dishonored's uh, main character this time around will be a woman, or yep. at least majorly featured. Maybe not the protagonist. You have a new Mirror's Edge. Mirror, Mirror's Faith Edge came back from Mirror's Edge, um, and then we got Evie in Assassin's Creed. So yep. that's actually been pretty good. But it's good to see them doing that because at least we're hearing a new story for once. Yeah, it wasn't another Marcus Fenix bro. <laughs> I'm gonna kill some animals. <laughs> I'm a caveman. But like the thing walks around the corner, he's like, "Come on!" Like just punches <laughs> it a couple of times. Yeah, no, like, we, we didn't have any of that. <laughs> so that was good. It was a nice change of pace, and it made me interested in this like Ygritte like character running around murdering these people. <laughs> You know um, nothing, Robo Dinosaur. <laughs> you know nothing. And I think it's also a testament to how cool the game is because it left that solid an impression because it was following up the Last Guardian. <laughs> it was sandwiched between some good games. Yeah, so I mean, the Last Guardian release was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, everybody was, went crazy. Everybody freaking out, and then they showed us this. But yeah, uh, that game that is like rocketed to the top of my radar. That is one of the games I'm most anticipating. Yeah. And really, like, uh, it seemed like the newer games are the ones I'm excited about. Yeah. So, the other one we obviously both chose is For Honor. Holy <laughs> shit. Let me tell you about a game. Let me tell you about a game that was special to me. Yeah? If you dig back in our podcasts, you will eventually hear us talking about games that were important to us when we were, like, coming up through Young Gamer Youth. And when we talk about the PlayStation era, I mentioned Bushido played. If you're old enough to have played this game, you remember what it was like. And if you haven't, there's probably no way for you to go back and do it. But there might be some YouTube videos or something for you to find. This is the next evolution of that. Bushido Blade was a really tight melee fighter that would, like, one hit killed you, basically. And you fought with swords and things like that. The, as soon as I saw it, I was like, somebody else liked that game because they made it again. Only they combined it with the other thing I love. Domination. Domination, <laughs> Knights, Castles. Knights, Castles. It, it was visually gorgeous. <laughs> yep. It looks like it plays like a dream. Everything that dev team said about it, you could tell it was a passion project. Like, a, the fucking Viking who came up on stage oh, to introduce God. it. Yeah. Like, you know, Kane with big beard and everything. He was like, I wonder if he took an arrow in the knee. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but like he came out and they're like, Yeah, let's talk about this game. And uh, you know what? It's better if you just see it. And they show you the trailer with <laughs> them, like, pull some guys up on the field. It's like, All right, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> they just like start going at it. And that is exactly what it needed to be. Like, that game looks like one of those beautiful competitive games that is the shortest distance between you and gameplay. It's like playing chess. Yeah. Like, once you understand the rules of that game, then it's all just about mastery. And it looks like one of those things I'm just going to lose myself in it. And I mean, really, like, double teaming somebody or, like, making sure you push your points and as soon as your, you know, two points are captured or, like, 75% done, you're like, all right, let's go kill somebody. Well, and the, the premise of it alone is great because it's, like, one of those classic barroom debates. Like, yeah. Well, I think the samurai could have taken the medieval crusader <laughs> of Europe. Like, nah, obviously. the Vikings would kill them both. Sure, and then like you can see the DLC in your head. Like, oh, here's the Roman centurions. Oh, here's the Mongols. Oh, here's like <laughs> this just, is Sparta, <laughs> right? Like, this is obviously just going to get even better and better and better as it goes. And it, the visual fidelity combined with the gameplay of it, just that was enough to sell me on it right off the bat. Yeah. That system where the right stick is controlling where you're positioning yeah. your blade. And then, like, you're watching the tells that they're giving you while you're doing... Oh, my God. I can't wait for so you it. You gotta think them. <laughs> you gotta fake them out. And like, then, like, the advantage of double-teaming somebody is, like, as yep. impressive as it would be in a, a fight like that. A couple of the gameplay mechanics were actually really cool, too. So, like, once you hit a 1,000 points, you start killing the other team members. Yeah. They can't respawn, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Could then, you like, imagine if you're the last man standing and you take on their team? I know. Like, and you have somebody <laughs> not like that. Or, like... To accumulate a lot of points or take his zone quickly, he was just wading into the masses of, like, NPC troops and just, <laughs> and just trying to decimate them all as quick as he could and break their line. And then, like, it had a kill streak like mechanic, because there's that there's yeah. one point where the samurai calls in, like, the arrow strike. Yep. And he then harries the bridge and, like, takes a bunch of health off the other people, so then they're instantly at a disadvantage when they go to fight The him. samurai looks so cool. He does look The fast cool. attack, like, oh, <laughs> He's like, I'm a glass cannon, but... <laughs> that crusader, though, they'll, like, flip around and hold the sword by the blade, and then he's just... Spicing him with, with the, the, the handle. <laughs> oh god, god, it was so good. Yeah. 
Oh, I want that one so bad. Yeah, that's that's rocketing to the top of my interest. And I thought it was pretty interesting because it was in the middle of Ubisoft show, which had a bunch of games we were all anticipating that I think yeah. you and I were largely kind of lukewarm on. Like, they showed The Division. Yeah, which actually, after E3, I wasn't as excited about. No. I was more excited for Rainbow Six Siege right, yeah. than The Division, and, which... In the other way, it was the other way around. Right, that was the exact same flip I had. Like, after seeing Siege again, I was like, okay, this game keeps looking better the more we see. Yeah. But every time I see The Division, there's, like, more questions raised rather than more answers. Yeah, I mean, open world? Uh, it doesn't really seem to be the case anymore. The visual fidelity is obviously worse than it was the last time. <laughs> Watch dogs, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we're in a situation like that yet. But right. At least good. we didn't get a Watch Dogs 2 announcement. <laughs> <laughs> that that would have just done it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor EA. And like, Ubisoft's conference was pretty good uh, on the whole, but I think that was the standout for me. It was as soon as I saw that. And then the fact that their playable state was that good. Yeah. Like, that he, like out of left field. Nobody was expecting the game. And no. Then just like... Here you go. And they're like, we produced this thing. We really like it. It's obviously a passion project. So. <laughs> you can play it this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, God, I cannot wait for the beta on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, really, <laughs> to bring up good conference, bad conference, EA had a bad conference. EA had a shit awful conference. If you work at EA or you know somebody who works at EA, I feel for you. You embarrassed yourselves. <laughs> Horrifically. It was pretty bad. It was cringeworthy bad. It had no momentum. It looked terrible in comparison to what had come before it in the day because they went after Microsoft, who had a really good conference, a very strong one. Yeah, Microsoft had a really good conference. They came out strong with, like, Halo 5. Yeah. The gameplay there, but EA. It was a cash grab. It was, like, an endless, shameless, like... Well, it's funny because, like, EA, everybody went to E3 for pretty much two reasons, right? For EA, Mass Effect, and Battlefront. Yeah. And they got the least amount of playtime. Oh my god. They showed... <laughs> I think it's like 45 seconds is what we got from the Mass yeah, Effect. we got a brief trailer of... Oh, sorry, not Mass Effect 4. Mass Effect Andromeda. Of Pathfinder? I think is what they called him? Yeah, yeah, the Pathfinder. You're like some kind of uh, uh, <laughs> explorer who's gone into Andromeda, our neighboring galaxy, um, who is apparently part of N7. They haven't explained why. I'm glad that tag's still yep. sticking around. But, um, yeah, they just showed it, and they're playing Ghost Riders in the sky, and he flips oh. through a bunch of worlds he can fly to, and then he warps to the desert world. And it was we, so good. We see the Mako for, like, half a second, yep. and then he's, like, scrambling up a hill, and then the robot thing's out of the desert, and that's all we got. And they ground pound, there so was then, a Krogan. We were <laughs> promised early in the conference, they were like, yeah, we're gonna get to Battlefront. Which they is, did stress it pretty hard. Yeah, they were like, we're gonna get to that, you guys are gonna get to hear about it, which, by the way, is the the game I was most excited for, and we're gonna talk about it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> But then we had to wait through the rest of EA's conference, which had a few lovely moments in it. I think, so we get to look at Unraveled pretty early on, which actually yep. looks pretty cool. Uh, yep. It's a physical place platformer from a small studio. That was Sweden. a great one. Like, I enjoyed that moment because it was very personal. It was about stories. It's about the string that ties us all together. And then it got dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> This is the funniest transition this I've ever seen. Poor tiny little Swedish man is going on about this like delicate yarn doll he li physically made in the woods with his children. Yeah. He's made this game about it. And then out of nowhere, they're like, Highway to the This is like jackass in a plants versus zombies suit comes out on stage <laughs> and just fucking annihilates the moment for everyone. It was so bad. Like, at least if they had come out with that kind of bombacity for a game somebody gave a shit about. But Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. The first one, they gave it to me for free on PlayStation Plus. It's the only reason I've ever played it. And even then, it didn't last that long. No. I get that that game is probably popular with a younger audience. I don't buy that its sales numbers justifies the almost 30 minutes they gave it on yeah, stage. It was a lot. And they're talking about like their microtransaction model yep. and all the DLC that they have planned for this game and all the support for it. And then... But, you know, it's okay, because they moved on to something very important. Yeah, mobile, mobile gaming. gaming. What but, the Not just mobile gaming, Minions mobile gaming. Oh, my God. And the fucking, they had that lady <laughs> come out, and she starts talking about, like, the metrics right off the bat. She's like, <laughs> our research has shown that mobile gaming is the largest client share of gamers on Earth. And it's like, you know God. what no one at E3 wants to hear about. Plus, like, if you have a mobile game... If you don't want it to be publicly crucified, maybe introduce it here in a more delicate way, because this is a hostile audience. Seriously. See Bethesda with their Fallout <laughs> companion game they released. Like, 
that's obviously just kind of a little cash grab at that they created to promote Fallout. That's actually a really cool game. I'd rather that than what we got transitioned from. Oh my god, we had like a trailer for the Minions game, then they showed us how to play a tap game. Yep. And it was a tap game. And they like literally showed you how to play it. That was a disaster. While he's missing some coconuts, you should send your friend out. That couldn't go bad. And then the EA Sports section started. Now, Which... <laughs> I'm a Madden fan. I As have, am I. I have lapsed from Madden. I've not bought one. And I was the last time I got it. I was in college. So with those grab packs from Bull Moose. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like I, I had, I used to really love Madden a lot. I played a bunch of the other EA games when I was a youth, but I moved away from most of the sports gaming. I was prepared for maybe. 30 minutes of sports yeah. gaming they would talk about nba live or... i mean they started with nhl yeah it's like okay okay they, they probably got to cut something like and we're not going to see nba reasonably there were problems with nhl so there were reasons why they wanted to show people that the new version was going to be yeah. good so they went to nba live which was in a similar state the nba live last edition had a lot of issues so they probably wanted to smooth things over and i was like well face capture thing was kind of cool but yeah but then we got the hoop god <laughs> <laughs> okay well <laughs> the fuck was he? So, so it's like thinking, you know, at that point, you're you're running out of time. Right. Like, I thought it was only an hour, and they had like 20, 20 minutes left. And then Pele came out. And then Pele came out. Nothing against about you, FIFA. Pele. Living legend. It's okay. <laughs> if you want to sit around and talk about soccer, I'm sure there's plenty of people who listen. I would I would listen to him all, all day. <laughs> Not the time and the place. No. And Pele's random story time for like 20 minutes with some guy who was just enchanted to be there with Pele. Yeah. Was, I guess, on some levels touching, but also completely irrelevant. Also, well, it didn't seem like the right place. That was the problem. Yeah. Like, it was completely out of left field that, you know, they interview somebody famous. Well, and in terms of, like, having him on stage, they gave him the same kind of gravitas or hierarchy as the hoop god who had preceded him. And so, like, I, I, don't, I don't really know what they were going for with that, but that, that was not a smart choice. I don't know. And then you, you thought it was over at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we had moved on. We hadn't. They showed us Mirror's Edge, which we were psyched about. Yep. And then we got hit by Madden. In and the, drafting. The dumbest fucking way <laughs> you ever could have built. Here's our Hearthstone mechanic that we've incorporated into Madden <laughs> for the next season. Here, We're going to show you how to use it and explain to you what fantasy football is. Because if you're into football video games, you've probably never heard of fantasy well, football. You know, when you have a draft, you get three cards and you get to pick person oh and they may not be there later and like it went Jesus. on and on and, and on. like and like after the draft finished i was like okay we're done with sports we're gonna move on to you know something important no they moved on to madden and the actual gameplay in the madden and somewhere in there they showed golf because you and i both oh yeah that's that. right <laughs> <laughs> they're like great quote from EA sports which is that the new madden golf it's like it's named after some new because it's not tiger woods anymore because it can't <laughs> no. be it's, it's too controversial and he sucks but the, the, it's like McElroy. That's his name. Like Rory McElroy. McElroy. I, mean, that's what it is. I don't know anything about golf. I'm sorry. But the, it, it's his new PGA Tour game, and they were like, this is golf without limits. Golf without limits, man. What? I'm pretty what, sure. they play with a cannon? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be a lot more interesting. God. Jesus. So, I mean, regardless, the last thing they showed was... Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah, and we get to see a three-minute trailer of the Battle of Hoth at the yep. end of the EA conference, which looked really rad. It looks awesome. <laughs> then, during Sony's conference, we get our second look at Battlefront, yep. which was the survival single-player mode against bots yep. that they showed on some desert planet. I'm assuming it was not Tatooine, because they keep saying it's either Jakku or some other desert planet, but whatever. <laughs> desert planet looks a hell of a lot like the canyons of Tatooine. And that game could not be more visually impressive from what they're showing. I'm I'm definitely sold. Oh my God. I was interested in Battlefront just because Star Wars Battlefront. Changing from the freaking TIE Fighter to, you know, ground troops to, you know, kill streaking as Darth Vader. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just looks so awesome. I, I cannot wait. And the way that game looks just is amazing. Like, it looks like you're playing in one of the original trilogy movies. Yeah. It just... I can't get over the visual fidelity in it with the real thing. And it's obvious that... The um, the level to which they're overselling the fact that they've, like, handled the original props and scanned them and things like that. Like, obviously, it gets pretty laborious to hear it over and over again. Yeah. But when you see the final product of it, you're like, okay, there's a reason they're so happy about this is because it worked. The amount of detail, like, the it's just, it's amazing what they brought to us. I am so fucking excited for Battlefront. Like, I can't even wait. Well, it's actually, for me, knocked cut off. Yeah. Because it comes out, what, 
eight days later or something like that? Yeah, a little bit. It releases right around the same time. It comes out three and a half weeks before the movie. And I mean, Call of Duty's showing was not that strong. No, Treyarch's showing was weird and awkward. <laughs> and Sony's, they were obviously given that partner time and that dude they sent out was very snidely whiplash. He's like walking out, almost wringing his hands, like, and this is the new home for Call of Duty because we like money and there's a lot of it here. Like, it, it's so greasy. It's and pretty bad. They showed the single player demo, which was like, it was alright. Like, they were fighting Co-op a giant mode robot. seems fun. Yeah, I was like, whatever. The multiplayer environment looked far more interesting. Which yeah. Obviously, is consistent with Treyarch, but <laughs> it didn't look interesting enough to knock off Destiny, which also showed the Taken King, which looked amazing. Yeah, you're talking about we're gonna get Destiny. into a lot of <laughs> the Taken King. That's gonna be a separate video. We're very excited about that. But then, like, it just didn't have anything to compel me. Like, I, I've split two shooters a lot. That's been fall for a long yeah. time now. Is you know, like Far Cry and COD, or you know, like whatever were the two issues that came out, Halo and COD, a couple years ago, and then we did Destiny, which didn't end up running up against anything because I... Well, no, we ran up against Far Cry. That's what I got was Far Cry 4 and Destiny. Actually, it wasn't Modern Warfare... Uh, fucking... The Ad- newest one. Advanced Warfare. Was Advanced Warfare series, was... So. Yeah, so Destiny. I didn't even get that yeah. one. No. <laughs> so I got Destiny and Far Cry. So it's usually a two shooters in the fall. This obviously... This fall is going to be the Taken King in September and then oh, Battlefront in hell's November. Yes. Hells yes. It's like, those are the two. So COD's kind of off my radar. So... Uh, I mean, we're definitely excited about all the games. Yeah. Uh, but post it down below. Let us know what you're looking forward to. There's something in the comments. Tell us what you thought uh, your most interesting games were. David and I are going to tackle uh, The Taken King. Of for course, sure. We'll get into <laughs> that and why we're so freaking excited for the continuation of Destiny. Um, and then I want to do another cast that we're going to talk about uh, some of the indies and smaller games that are up there, like E.T. or uh, Cuphead. Yeah. Um, there are just so Cuphead many good ones. looked amazing. Oh, my God. Makes me want an Xbox, and that's saying something. <laughs> uh, but yeah hit us in the comments and let us know what you think and find us on YouTube and whatnot. yeah YouTube D-Man and, 5 YouTube and, and whatnot. Snorlaxa PSN stuff sign up sign up <laughs>